Hi and welcome to C Programming. In today's lesson we're going to learn how to implement bubble sorting. Now why would we need to implement bubble sorting? So let's say for instance we have an array that it's unsorted and we need to sort this array in an ascending manner. So from small to big. And the question is now how would we accomplish this task. So sorting is a old task or problem that was already being solved countless times. One of the most popular sorting algorithms is called bubble sorting. It utilizes two for loops inside each other with an if statement inside the inner for loop to actually accomplish this sorting task. Now let's quickly have a look at bubble sorting in a visual manner. So bubble sorting consists out of two for loops. Now the outer for loop we will call our passes. Pass 1, pass 2 and pass 3. And then our inner for loop inside pass 1 will be i is equal to 0, i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2. And the same for pass 2, i is equal to 0, 1 and 2. Then for pass 3, 0, 1, and 2. So we have two for loops, one inside the other. Okay, so this is the first iteration of the outside for loop, second iteration of the outside for loop, and the last iteration of the outside for loop. So if an array has a size of 4, our outside for loop needs to repeat three times as well as our inside loop needs to repeat three times. So that's the rule. If the array has a size of four, the two for loops needs to repeat one less. So in actual fact, size minus one for each for loop. Okay, so we have an array that's four, three, two, one, and we need to sort this in an ascending manner. Now this is our worst case scenario. 4, 3, 2, 1 is the direct opposite of ascending. So this is our worst case scenario. And we're going to use this example to illustrate how the bubble sorting algorithm actually sorts this array from small to big. So first up, we're going to compare i is equal to 0, the index of this array. And then i is equal to 0 plus 1. So in actual fact, this part and this part. Okay, so we're going to compare that. And if it's bigger than the other, if 0 is bigger than 4, oh, 0 is bigger than 1, index 0 and 1, we're going to swap them around. So is 4 bigger than 3? Yes. So we swap them around, okay, and the rest of the array stays the same. Next up, we are going to compare i is equal to 1, this one here, and i is equal to 1 plus 1. So we're going to ask, is 4 bigger than 2? Yes, it's bigger than 2, so we're going to swap them around. And then we're going to compare i is equal to 2 this element here, and i is equal to 2 plus 1. So, is 4 bigger than 1? Yes. So, we're going to swap 1 and 4 around. Then we're going to continue. We're going to ask, is, we're going to repeat this whole thing. We're going to say, is 3 bigger than 2? Yes. So, we swap 2 and 3 around, and 1 and 4 stays the same. And then we Ask again, is 3 bigger than 1? Yes, so we swap. And then lastly, we're going to have for i is equal to 2, so index 2 and index 2 plus 1. So is 3 bigger than 4? No, that's false. So they don't swap around. And then we're going to repeat this whole thing again. So we're going to say, is 2 bigger than 1? Yes, so we swap them around. Is 2 bigger than 3? No, so it's not going to be swapped. And then is 
3 bigger than 4? No. So we don't swap them around. So that's an actual fact how the bubble sort algorithm actually utilizes two for loops to traverse through all the elements and swapping them around in order to get them in an ascending manner. Okay, so how would we implement this in C programming? Let's quickly have a look. So let's say for instance we have an array with 10 random numbers ranging from 0 to 9 and they are not sorted and we actually want to sort them. So first of all let's quickly write our own display function. We're going to write the display and this display function is going to receive an array and a size. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create our own bubble sort function. It's going to receive the array and it's going to receive the size. Now this bubble sort will sort in an ascending. So ascending. Okay. So first off, we want to go and display this unsorted array to the user. So what we will do is we will say display, display, and we're going to say array one and the size. Oops, as I forgot. So the size is ten. And we will send 10. Okay. So please don't forget to add your size to the array declaration. So we've got the array 1 and the 10. So we want to go and display this to the user. So we will say void display int a int size. Re no return needed. So we're going to have an int i counter variable. I'm going to say for i is equal to zero. i is smaller than the size. And then i plus plus. And we can use a printf statement to go and display the actual array element one by one. Okay, so this we have already done in a previous lecture. So, how to display an array. So, we have a display function that will be able to display an array. So, let's build and run and see if there's no errors. So, we are able to display three, six, three, four, eight, two, nine, one, zero, five, seven. So, that's the correct unsorted array. So, just to make it neat, we can add a new line at the end, and we can say print if unsorted array. Okay, so let's quickly see what happens, just to get it nice and neat output. Oops, there's one mistake. That needs to be a backslash. So now we would see unsorted array and we have the unsorted array. Now what we want to do is we want to sort this array. Okay, so by using the bubble sort. So what we will do is we will call this bubble sort function bubble sort we're going to send array 1 to this bubble sort function and the size again. Okay, quite easy so far. Then we're going to start with our bubble sort. We're going to say int a, int size. So, First of all, we need two for loops, one inside the other. So we're going to need two counter variables. Count counter variable i, 
and counter variable pass. Okay. Now that we know this, we can go and create two for loops. For loop pass and pass started in the example at one. Okay. And pass is smaller than size. So pass smaller than size means that it's going to be, let's say for instance, one. Um, if the size is equal to four. So size is equal to four means that when it's smaller than one, uh, um, smaller than size, it's going to be one, two, and then three. So three loops for size that's not included. So pass is smaller than size, then it's going to be one less. Okay, it's just a small mistake. Then we say pass increment. Then the inside for loop is going to be i is equal to zero. i is smaller than size minus one. So you can see we either have a size minus one and from zero, or we can just say smaller than size and then we can start from one. But the reason why we want to start at zero for the inner for loop is because the inner for loop counter is going to be used for the indexes of the array. And the indexes of the array starts at zero. So that's, that's it. We've got our outside for loop that counts one, two, three if the size is four. And then this, in this case, it's now size is equal to 10. So it will count from one to nine. And then this inner for loop will count from zero to, what's it? Eight. Okay. Nine times. So if the size is 10, both for loops need to iterate nine times. Okay. So, then we have an if statement. Now, why do we need an if statement? We need to compare if the one is bigger than the other. That comparison that we had to determine if we need to swap around. So, before we swap around, we need to determine is the left value bigger than the right value? So, we're going to say is if a i is bigger than a i plus one so that's where we add the index zero compared to the index one and then index one compared to index two and then index two compared to index three etc so this is just a generic way of writing this so that's our if statement so inside the if statement it's very important it's going to be multiple lines now if a index i is bigger than a index i plus one we need to swap around and how do we swap around we need a hold variable so we're going to create a hold variable to hold a the value for us otherwise we're going to lose a value and you will see just why we would need this so i'm going to say hold is equal to a index i and then I can say a index i is equal to a index i plus 1. Okay, so I'm storing this value, keeping it safe inside all. And then I can change a i to a i plus 1. And then the same for a i plus 1. I can make it equal to hold. And there we have it. That's going to be our bubble sort algorithm. So, as you can see, it's a quite a complex algorithm for a beginner programmer, but it becomes much easier the more you practice this. So, after our array has been sorted, hopefully, we can go and display our array again. And this will be then our sorted array, hopefully. If there's no errors so let's quickly go and run this and see what happens so 
our unsorted array is displayed and then we have our sorted array from 0 to 9. So as we can see our bubble sort algorithm works. So just to recap we've got our prototypes, our function prototypes, then we've got our two display and bubble sort functions. Bubble sort has two for loops inside one another and then inside the inside for loop there's an if statement to compare if the one index is bigger than the index plus one and then we swap around. So that's the bubble sort. That's all from me. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.